Welcome to the show, From the Soapbox to the Stage. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. If you've ever dreamed of standing on a stage to inspire, educate, or motivate an audience, then stay tuned. I'll be interviewing top speakers and sharing tips on each episode for helping aspiring speakers, as well as those who've already stepped onto a stage, how to move from public speaker to professional speaker. Now, many people get opportunities to, to present to a group or speak at an event, but how many of those actually get invited back to do it again? Only those with the talent and professional business skills that event planners and organizers are looking for. That's what viewers will learn here as they hear from professional speakers who've been there and have done that. Now with me on the show today is a certified self-defense instructor and personal security specialist. Dennis Golden travels both nationally and internationally speaking on personal safety for women for such organizations as Lego, ESPN, Stanley, Black & Decker, Johnson & Johnson, Cisco Systems, and more. Mr. Golden is the president of the National Speakers Association, Connecticut chapter, and author of a soon-to-be-published book, A Woman's Guide to Personal Safety. Welcome to the show, Dennis. Thank you very much for having me. We appreciate you right now are are the chapter president of the National Speakers Association. Tell us a, a little bit about that. I got voted in kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I joined uh, the National Speakers Association a couple of years ago. And when I first joined it, I wasn't really that impressed with it, which was kind of interesting. And I got away from it. And then I was called, I saw uh, one advertisement for one of the programs they were running. And I went down and I was totally impressed. I was blown away by the presentation. And uh, from that particular point, I, I joined. I've been a member now for about the past five years. And as I've gotten more and more involved with it, suddenly I found myself on the board. And next thing I knew, I was president uh, this year and next year. And it's been a great experience. And uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Well, what's the requirement to, to join NSA for people who are just he learning about it for the first time? Well, typically, uh, most of the chapters around the country uh, require you to be a professional speaker, which means that you've already had some type of income. There's a whole series. If you go on the, on the website for the National Speakers Association, you'll see all the various credentials. The Connecticut chapter is a bit unusual because it's a smaller chapter. We actually allow, uh, we're one of the few that allow what we call associate members. And those are people who can come in who are still learning the business and who want to get involved. And uh, we actually, this year for the first time, put together a program where we're taking people who are coming into the business and within one year we will get them to the level of professional speaker. Mm. And so it's a, it's a whole uh, tutored program uh, run by uh, a very uh, enthusiastic woman who uh, is doing a great job with uh, about 15 people. In fact, one of the most interesting things, we had a brand new speaker come in, never spoke before professionally. Uh, he uh, got involved with the, this training program that we're running and within, I think it was three weeks, he had a $5,000 speaking engagement. Wow. So it seems to be working. That's great. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what you do with your speaking. How do you use that talent uh, in, in your business? Well, you know, speaking, I, when I first started in the speaking business, I sort of got pulled into it. I really didn't want to be a speaker. Uh, and I, a terrible story, when I was in grammar school, at the eighth grade you had to do a play, and I was up there singing, and the nun came past and pointed at me and said, you have a terrible voice. <laughs> and I said, okay. So th I went off to high school. When I got in high school, my high school English teacher said, uh, I'd like you to read a, a couple of paragraphs. So I was reading a couple of paragraphs, and he said, you know, you really should be on the public speaking debating team. And of course, I already knew that I was a terrible speaker. <laughs> so I said, I don't want any part of it. And he said, that's okay, I'll think about it. So the following day, he said, did you think about it? And I said, yeah. He said, what's your decision? I decided no. And he said, well, you've got a couple of things to consider. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, first, he said, I'm your English teacher. And uh, so that, you might want to keep that in mind. He said, second, he said, I'm the head of the debating and public speaking team. And he said, if you don't join, I think I'll fare you in English. So I decided to become a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and since that time, I've, uh, I've gotten, actually all through high school, I've won scholarships. I paid for my entire high school education. Uh, I got into college. I was on college radio for a number of years. And then from there, it just sort of kept going on. I found myself um, uh, teaching. Uh, actually, I've, when I finished my master's uh, degree down at NYU, I was offered a, a teaching position at one of the local universities. I started teaching at the college level. Uh, so it's, it's just been an ongoing situation. And then uh, what happened with this, this whole uh, situation with uh, I Am Safe, this, this business that we run, I was involved in a, a, a sort of a face-to-face -face encounter with an armed attacker on a New York City subway. 
and I used some of the speaking techniques and some of the techniques I knew how to deflect the violence and uh, it worked very well. Mm. And it was at that particular point we said, you know, maybe there's a lot of people who don't understand how to do this. So we started to work that into our whole, our whole business. And then uh, as we developed that whole approach, I received a, a call one day from one of the large pharmaceutical companies over in New Jersey who said, uh, we'd like to have you come out and talk to us about personal safety for our salespeople. So we went out and we found out that they had 8,000 salespeople out on the street who were being approached almost on a daily basis by people who were interested in uh, what they were carrying in their sample bags. So we ran a whole series of programs to show them how to deflect violence. And uh, so it's a, it's a combination of things. So uh, that's really how we use speaking in our business. So you uh, do lectures or workshops for organizations that hire you to bring you in for I Am Safe. Talk a little bit more about I Am Safe. Well, I Am Safe started, as I said, about 15 years ago with, with this particular program. And what we really concentrate on is the fact that when we first started, I would say we were, we were teaching to uh, defeat the symptoms. Uh, people were coming to us and saying, well, how do I defend myself or what do I do with, with various situations? And as that began to change, we began to look at it and said, you know, let's get back to the root cause. And the root cause we discovered was that all violence or all conflict begins with words. So we said, all right, is there a way that we can show people how to uh, deal with conflict using words? And then we thought a little bit further. We said, you know, in high school, in grammar school, in college, there was never a time that any of us took a course on how to deal with difficult people. And yet, on a daily basis, we all deal with difficult people. I don't know about you, but I don't use my algebra very much anymore. But I do deal with difficult people. So we started to work that whole approach on dealing with difficult people, how do you do that, and how do you do it properly? Because most of us, when we, re we react to a situation, we tend to either overreact or underreact, and both cause more problems. So we try to show people how to use empathy and sort of counterintuitive ways of using language and speech to calm down a situation and not escalate it. You do private events. Do you, do you speak at conferences as well? <clears throat> We're brought in by uh, any number of organizations. As you noted in the beginning here, some of the larger companies we work with. But we're also brought in by smaller groups. We're brought in by associations. We're brought in by nonprofit organizations. We've been brought in by uh, colleges and universities uh, who are all looking at different approaches. The, uh, some of the programs, for example, we run them on uh, programs on domestic abuse and domestic violence, how to prevent that how to handle bullying in the workplace, how to stop workplace violence. Uh, we've been brought in for programs, for example, to how, what do you do to handle a home invasion? Down in Connecticut, of course, we had that horrific situation with the Pettit family. And so you have a, a number of people who are saying, well, <clears throat> how, do we, how do we protect ourselves in those situations? And a lot of it is a matter of being intuitive. It's also a matter of being able to really be empathetic in dealing with someone where you feel you're being challenged. And it's something we don't do normally. Any, uh, any uh, challenges in working with groups speaking uh, <coughs> that, you, that you've encountered? Any challenges or any rewarding, enriching experiences? Oh, we have many. I think one of the things that we find uh, is the, the feedback after. Uh, we had, uh, we've, we've had several uh, HR directors who have called us up and have given us stories about uh, employees who have encountered people in parking lots. Uh, there was one marvelous story of a woman who came out of our class uh, mm -hmm. and she went to dinner with her husband about, I think it was two or three nights later. And as they were walking down the street, they encountered a group of I guess, uh, street toughs that looked like they were going to be a problem. And the woman said to her husband, excuse me, you get in the car, dear, I'll take care of this. <laughs> and she actually did take care of the situation. So we get a lot of those stories. We had a woman uh, who was going down to Haiti, uh, and she was concerned about her personal safety in Haiti, particularly with, uh, with earthquakes and all of the things that were happening. And she said to us, how can I prepare personally for that? Because we do a lot with travel safety as well. And we gave her a whole series of tips on what to do and how to handle that situation. And sure enough, when she got down there, she and a whole group were checking in at the hotel. As they were checking in, the first rumbles of the earthquake occurred, and she immediately had a plan in place. She knew what to do and immediately escaped the building. She sat outside and watched the entire building collapse. Wow. So those are the kind of stories that inspire mm -hmm. us and really make the chills run up your spine. So when I, I, I noticed what you did for work, I, it was 
it, it's, I, I wanted people to see that it's not just about motivational speaking. You can take that and, and do all kinds of things to help people and change lives. I'm going to ask you to, to stay on. We're about to go to a, a break, and I, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about tips that you have for aspiring speakers. If you Okay, would. we'll do that. Sounds like fun. Marketing is an essential aspect of any business, including professional speaking, but should you be marketing yourself as a speaker or your message? Dennis and I will discuss that tip and more when we come back from our break, so stick around. We'll be right back.